Watch how I transform this $2 thrifted piece of furniture into a fantastic rustic farmhouse bench. I'll show you how I easily dismantled this glued piece of furniture, built a new base, and gave it a rustic paint job. Hi everyone! I found this piece of furniture at my favorite dollhouse store on their sale table. It's a hall tree entry bench with a couple coat hooks and a mirror. I like that it's a one-of-a-kind handmade piece and I decided to buy it and do a couple modifications. I didn't have too much of a plan going into this, but I knew this mirror had to come off the back because it prevents the piece of furniture from sitting against a wall. I do like this frame, so I'll save it for later, either to use in this project or something else. I wanted to take this piece apart like I did in my Dollar Tree furniture build. This time, instead of putting the piece in the microwave, I used a heat gun to loosen the hot glue. A heat gun is a lot hotter than a hair dryer. I'm not sure if a hair dryer would work for this purpose. If you guys have tried it, let me know. I just keep my heat gun moving to keep from scorching the wood and in just a few seconds, I can easily remove the glued pieces. At this point, I decided to completely take apart the lower half to create an open shelf instead of these closed sides. It only took a minute or two to dismantle the bottom half of this cabinet. I'm keeping all these pieces to reuse some of them later. This piece went across the top and I'm cutting it in half to form a new front. I didn't like how enclosed the old bench was so I'm going to remake this so it'll be open on the front and the sides. I start by gluing these pieces of wood together with some wood glue and I set that aside to set up a little bit. I'm replacing the solid side with some rails so this bench will be open on the ends and I'm using the old bottom piece to cut these rails. I want to mimic the curves on the front of this entryway bench, so I'll use some files just to sand this down and create a little dome. This look could easily be achieved with sandpaper if you don't have a metal file like I have. I added a leftover Dollar Tree furniture leg across the back to add some more support. This piece will make up the new bottom of the entryway bench and I'll be putting some slats across the top of it using coffee stir sticks. To avoid having to do math, I lay the stir stick across, mark with a pencil, and I use my miter shear cutters to cut it. Then I check to make sure this length is wide enough for the whole base, and I cut them all the same length. I glued the first slat in place toward the back of the piece, and then without using any glue, I arranged the rest of the slats to get an idea of how far away I need to glue them. Once I knew how many slats I would need for the bottom, I glued them in place and I shifted them around a little bit while the glue was wet to make sure they look pretty even between the boards. I like this new design of having an open shelf because it gives an opportunity to display some shoes or a trinket box or whatever else you'd like in your miniature space. I finished it off by gluing another piece of coffee stir stick in between the front legs. With the new bottom shelf in place, you can see how much more open this piece of furniture looks than what we started with. To modify this bench a bit further, I decided to use these laser cutouts I have. Full-size hall trees often have corbels that connect the top to the bench, so I want to mimic that look. I got these in a 25 cent grab bag at the dollhouse store. I think the scale is a bit large, so I decided to trim them up and use a combination of files to add some more design and make them more in scale. I really like how it ties the bottom half to the top piece. Now it's time for paint. I started with a black base coat and covered it with cream. At this point, I decided I'll put this frame on the front, so I gave it the same black and ivory paint scheme. This is how you do this rustic paint effect. So with the dark base color, I'm rubbing away the top layer of paint to reveal the color underneath. I have some rubbing alcohol on a paper towel. I've tried this with water and it does work, but the rubbing alcohol works a bit faster. You can remove as much or as little of the top coat of paint as you like, and choosing a different base color and top coat will give you a completely different look. I painted my hooks black and then my cat Banner decided to crash the party. Come on, buddy. When you hear a cat crying in the background, it's probably Banner. Let's get back on track. I'm finishing this paint technique off with a little bit of watered down brown paint and I wipe away the excess. The brown wash acts as a glaze and ages the piece nicely. I'll add the mirror and roll the beauty shots. My plan is to release a YouTube short and a video every single week, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. 
let me know what you think of this one and how it turned out. 